Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to install Fedora Linux and the reason for that is in a recent poll I asked which Linux distribution should I use in this month's month on Linux. I've just finished one on MX Linux and now I put a poll up to see which one should be next and the poll results are in and it looks like Fedora's edged it by one vote and so Fedora it is. I thought I'd do something slightly different because I've already done a Fedora install guide and uh, I've also already done a review of Fedora. So we'll go to Fedora Linux and we'll go to the workstation. If we click the download link, but we scroll down, you'll see that we've got this concept of an atomic desktop. So you've got this thing called Silver Blue and that gives you the GNOME desktop experience, but in an atomic fashion. So if we look at it, it says the whole system is updated in one go. Uh, everything's done by flat packs, and uh, so it's all basically containerized system. So I thought we'd give that a go, see how that goes for the month, uh, because I've already used the original Fedora um, a number of times, and I thought let's let's try this one out. So I'm not going to do Silver Blue um, because I don't really want to use the GNOME desktop. So I thought what I'll do is use the Budgie desktop, which is a bit like GNOME but with nicer menus and things like. So I'm going to click on this Fedora Media Writer here, which I've already done. But if you click on that, it will download in the top right corner. Uh, all you need is a blank USB drive, um, which I've already put in. Actually, if you put any media drive in there at all, it's just going to wipe the contents of it. So if there's anything on your USB drive that you want to keep, I suggest you copy it off first. I am also, as well as downloading this media writer, I'm going to download the ISO image as well because I think you run the writer and then select the image you've downloaded. So I want the atomic one and I'm not sure it's in the menus. So I'm just going to click this download link here. Okay, so we can go to our Windows Explorer and you'll see in the downloads folder I've got media writer and I've got, we've got this OS3 one here which is budgie. I've also done that in LXQT one, but I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the OS tree one. And all I need to do now is run this Fedora Media Writer. And I, all I have to do is double click that. And that will install. We'll ask, do you want to allow this app to make changes to advice? The answer is yes. And then you have to answer, I agree to the license agreement. And then you have to click install. And that will install the Media Writer to your PC get to the end you click next and you click finished and it should start automatically we can close this window now okay so this is Fedora Media Writer and you can see the three options download automatically select ISO and then restore your USB drive I'm going to do select ISO because I downloaded the ISO I want to use and then I'm going to click next and then I have to select the ISO so I click the select button here and then I go to my downloads folder and I click on this one here. This OS tree one is the budgie one and I click open and pick the USB drive. I've only got one inserted, so I select that and then I click write. And that image will now be written to the USB drive. After writing the file to the USB drive, you can see it's now checking that the data is written correctly. OK, so that is the USB drive successfully created. I'm going to click finish here and I can close this program down. Now, the next step is to put the USB drive in the machine you want to put Fedora onto. And I'm going to show you that next. So I've been, boot, so I've booted up the computer and I have to press the relevant function key to bring up the boot menu, which in my case is F7. And I need to pick the USB drive, in my case is a SanDisk Cruiser, and then you've got the first option which is install Fedora. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is set up the language, I'm going to do English United Kingdom, and then we just work our way through these options. Now I hate this installer, um, I'm not going to change my mind on that. Um, keyboard layout has already selected the correct one, English UK. And I can test the layout here if I want, and you can see a pound symbol comes up. So we're going to click down to that language support. It's picked up English United Kingdom again, so we're just going to select down to that. Obviously, if you want a different language, you have to select it. Time and date, it's worked out 
uh, in UK time zone, so it's chosen London for me. And it's automatic date and time, so we're good with that. Installation destination, this is where things get a bit tricky. And I want to install onto this drive here, so I'm going to select it. And storage configuration we're going to have as automatic. So I'm going to click done to that. Uh, you can see it's saying that I haven't got enough disk space, so I need to reclaim space, so I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to do delete all. Now, if this is your machine, it'll probably be Windows that you're deleting. So make sure you've taken a good backup before you start and that you can get back to it if you want to. Uh, but I'm just going to click delete all and then reclaim space. Uh, host name and network. So uh, it's picked up. I've got network, uh, Ethernet, and I've also got wireless here. I can select network if I want to. And you can see it's picked up my network. And you can see that's connected, so I can click done there. I didn't actually set a host name. Now you can set that down here. I'm going to call it Gary PC. Apply. And we're going to click done and then we're going to go for the root account now uh, this is disabled by default uh, so i assume you basically get root access by entering via sudo um, but you can enable it here if you want to i'm going to leave it disabled and see what happens although it is now giving me a warning so maybe i will enable it and i'll give it a good password Now it says it fails the dictionary check, that's fine. Um, it's uh, not something I'm overly worried about at this stage. Uh, but you'll see that you have to press done again if that's the case. And then user creation, I'm gonna create a user. You can add admin privileges to this user account, which is what I was saying before, like if you wanted pseudo access. So I'm gonna leave that ticked. And require a password, yes, I'm going to give it a password. There's an advanced option here, and you can specify user ID and other group memberships. I'm not going to do that. I'm just click done here. Again, it's complaining about the password. And I'm going to do begin installation. And it will now start installing Fedora to this machine. Uh, that's the process complete. I can now reboot the system and hopefully stop using shaky cam. So as you can see, uh, Fedora is now installed. Uh, yeah, you do have to remove the USB drive when it reboots. Uh, but then you can see I've got uh, Fedora Linux by Geotomic at the top. I'm just going to press return there. And we just need to log in. I don't know if it's supposed to be dark like that or whether my background just hasn't shown up yet. And that is it. A month on Fedora Linux is about to begin. OK, so this is the first time I've booted into Fedora. And as you can see, it is now fully installed. Now, this is going to be an interesting month on Fedora, especially as it's the atomic version of Budgie. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm either going to be pleasantly surprised at the end of this or I am going to be tearing what's left of the hair on my head out and I will be crying into my beer. But uh, we'll find out. Uh, in the next guide, I'll be showing you all the setup things I do post-install. Um, but for now, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching.